This poem is called Everything, Almost. So, this is poetry. Pen meets paper, but not really, just pixels, just bites, imaginary words glow on a stream, screen, but see, this is for you and it's real. In 10 years, please read this. Say the words, the words, every intonation, every hard to see. Read this and remember, Micah Christine, remember who you were at age 18. Every morning I see this girl. In a mirror, I suppose she's me and I, her, one and the same, but in laying these bricks, these words down like brick, talk to her, talk, talk to you, Micah Bennett. That's, that's your name. You wonder if you've lived up to it. These days, glory and gold don't do the trick. They want so much more from you that's sick. Be kind, but don't shake every hand. Be smart, but not as strong as your man. Or be strong, but not as strong as your man. Be smart, but don't dare show it. Get involved, but don't be so enthusiastic. You'd gladly fetch a dragon's head, but they want so much more from you than sick. Let's start at day one. You crawled out of that catacomb into the light and into the love number five of a Midwestern family, and so you hear you fed discontent. You grow restless in the light because your eyes readjust each degree, each beautiful, each horrific sight. You spent 18 years here. What have you done? Anything useful, productive, inspiring? Why only now have you an identity crisis? Because a textbook told you to? Pound it out. Take off that mask like you do once a year, but Wapo skits don't chill like, like, you, like they used to. And after all, underneath all that flannel, the overalls, the boots, and the mask is some new boy you will never get to know. I know your fear. I won't tell, but I know that why this year that mask stuck on like painted on doll's clothes. Wear it long enough and it breaks in like a soft t-shirt. Melts into your skin, your skin, your soul. Take that off and what is left? And that mask isn't all bad. Fake it till you make it, or what the mind sees, the body believes. You wrote a lot of college essays about continual self-improvement, and that's got to start somewhere, right? Well, what is left underneath, and who put it there? Because lately, you haven't been you, and that worries me. You say all sorts of things, like, forget everything with me. Let's forget that we exist. We don't have to feel real. Forget we ever felt like this. Remember that girl you used to be friends with? Really, that's where it started, when you took a stroll along a canyon edge. Five years you walked with that girl along that edge until one day you stopped and you looked at her. Confused, you stared to find her ears and her mouth vanished and her glossy eyes just stared right through you. In search of comfort on that precarious edge, you reached out for her hand, but it was made of straw. So slowly that you only see it now in hindsight. She took handfuls of dirt from below your feet. She put the dirt in her pockets, her sleeves, her boots, trying to stuff herself. In hindsight, you realize she never intended to hurt you, but she pulled all the dirt from below your feet. And the edge you stood on crumbled away and you dropped into the river below. You tumbled through that raging river and learned what it felt like to drown. The river raged on your account. Rage seeped from your pores and made the water boil like your blood. Hot water streamed, tears down your face, choking, spluttering, drowning, salt, salty, hot, angry, despairing tears. And for a long time, this defined you. You were rage. You were despair. You were so incredibly let down with, you were a barely composed figure with red-ribbed eyes turning to hide your face while spitting out a chi response, wanting a hug but not wanting to appear attention-seeking. I remember that boy who said he loved you. You know he didn't, but you believed him anyways, and you walked with him for a long while too. Actually, you swam with him. You swam all the way out to the very center of the freakish Atlantic, and you taught each other how to swim as neither of you really ever tried before. It's just like kissing, just like dating. Carefully, you tread water until you took your first real stroke together. And then it was just you two, in the middle of the ocean, a little lost, but it didn't matter. You knew the day would come when you had to leave each other for separate shores, but when you let go, it hurt so much more than you thought it would. But you parted ways, and you called back and forth to each other, and everything seemed fine until he stopped calling back. You didn't believe that he loved you, but you thought you were friends. And each time you looked behind you, wondering what was wrong, your stroke faltered and you choked on a little bit of water. Again and again you looked and you spluttered until you were on the bottom of the ocean, again learning what it felt like to drown. But you learned to swim. You didn't drown, although at times it feels you did that a happier copy of Michael Christine still lies beneath the blue and green. Do not fixate on the ledge, the ocean, or the fall. You are strong. Do not let two hollow men define you. They and you will lead your lives, and sometimes when you fall, you fly. I watch. You are a nomad, living between the peaks and the valleys. You climb a mountain every day. Rocks and trees, rocks and trees. I hurt when you slide down that mountainside so willingly into the valley. What pulls you down there? I know what pulls you.
drags you down. Many know the beast that drags you down from the mountains. You never dare to name it because you know that compared to others, your beast is a house pet. Still, the beast travels in the shadows, never really seen, and is simply a phantom that preys on the tire. It gently pulls on the back of your collar, the heels of your shoes, and infuses your limbs and chest with lead, letting gravity do the rest. It injects your mind with chaos until, the, until thoughts spiral down and down the mountain. So of course your ragged body follows. This is the beast with a name that you will not speak. You have always been a thinker, a high need for affect. The beast has twisted a healthy practice, turned it dark black. You fear you're going crazy, anxious, trembles, trembles, so of course you hide in your sleep. You prefer blank and muted thoughts, dreams, to the chaos, swelling, and ringing of the waking world. A recess of your mind believes mono is a cure, not a virus. Do not let the beast find you. Turn over ruins of adult thought and re recall preteen dreams, childhood plans. Be proud of the extensive blueprints created by optimistic hands. I listen. Whispers in the dark. Little puffs of prayers that die on your tongue. Oh God. If hell is real, you've, hell is real, you've made your reservation. Fuck you, God seems to do it. You say all sort of things. I'm told I am here, and here is the Lord. Read that book and see, but I can't move forward. God, what is holding me back? What must I let go to find the faith that I lack? These Christians seem to know. But no one can say just whose feet I should kiss. I'm like a child who plays and can't handle the vagueness. Awake and fear God's absence. I know your greater fear. It's that you doubt his existence. And I've known you for 18 years. Every day, every second, every moment, every breath, I've been there. You keep a unique kind of diary. From the day of your birth, you've written down the major things you do each day and how you felt about it. It's a wall calendar written in shorthand that only you know how to read. It's a rough definition of you. But you hide certain portions because you know that on those days, more like months really, you lost yourself. You were ashamed of the pathetic person, the crumbled character that stares at you from that calendar. That is not you. You hide from it, but don't you see? Life is just trial and error, and those days cover up the errors. And remember that you are strong and smart, and the point of errors is not that they define, but refine identity. And you are more than the sum of your total experience. So, wake up. Your mind reels, it hurts to feel, but not all the time. You are more than rage, the hurt of recent days, more than falling short of expectations. You are more than words can say, and even here on pixel paper, all these words are false. They're not, they're false, but not a masquerade. Not lies, but half-truths. I keep going, it's the best I can do. You are every breath in your body, every thought in your mind, sane and insane all at one time. And so what if your tears, salt water, means no shame? I give weight to your fears, but fear is not your name. Sometimes it hurts to be real, but never ever, and I mean this, feel sorry for how you feel. So, how do you feel after lifting the mask? The half-truth is out, and you'll live out the rest. So this is poetry. Pen meets paper, but not really. Just pixels, just bites, imaginary words glow on a stream. And the truth will out, they always say. I did my best and lifted her mask, but underneath there was just so much. I sure I'm proud of all that muchness. To Mike or Christine in 10 years' time, read this again with your older mind. What, learn what you can, and then share what you know of ledges, of oceans, of swimming, of drowning, of God, of feeling. Who are you now? Do you still talk to yourself about, as I've done here, laying these words like bricks? Take your place in the human race. We are all pining for a prize. They are not your competitors, but your brothers and your sisters, and they will define you and you them. But in 10 years, please read this. Say the words, the words, every intonation, every hard C. Read this, remember, Michael Christine. Remember who you were at age 18. Be who you are, and don't worry about your identity.